Fire Church. How's everybody doing this morning? Man, how many of y'all excited for Jesus today? Amen, amen. Awesome. Let's just go before the Lord and pray before we pray. Lord God, we thank you so much for this opportunity to be with you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we just invite you to just fill up the hearts of your people today, Lord God. We ask that you speak to us a new fresh word, God, a fresh revelation of what you want to do in our lives, Father God, even today, God. God, we thank you so much for your sacrifice, Jesus, and doing it all for us, paying the ultimate price, God. And now we have this opportunity freely, God, to worship you in spirit and in truth. God, we just pray for the word as it goes forth. God, we pray for this time of worship and praise, God, as we lift up your name today, God. That we just get a, a new revelation of your face today, of your love, Lord. God, we thank you so much for who you are and what you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody shout it out. Amen, amen. Come on, let's lift them up this morning. Come on, put your hands together.
gather here for you today, God.
Just every broken piece of my heart I was so broken So lost before you, Jesus God, we worship you today, Lord We thank you for your love Thank you for your blood, Jesus You gave it up You gave it all for me You gave it all for us You never change, Lord. Through the ages, you never change, Lord. Oh, we need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Oh, we need you, Lord. Oh, oh, come to me. We worship you, Jesus. We just exalt you in this place this morning, God. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for your presence in this place. Come on, church. Can we just lift our hands? We worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Uh, God was showing me uh, this past week how that uh, although we were created to worship, that worship is also a weapon. So whatever you are going through, have you ever tried to solve it by worshiping God? You know, sometimes when we go through things, we try everything in our own strength and our own power to, to try to make it right or try to fix it, right? And I guess God was just showing me... Um, in 2 Corinthians that the weapons of our warfare are not are not carnal but they're mighty in God for pulling down strongholds like the weapons we try to do everything that we can in our part although we may be being attacked spiritually we try to fight back physically but God is saying hey there's weapons the weapons of the warfare are not are not physical but they're spiritual and I believe that worship is a spiritual weapon that we don't utilize enough, right? If you remember the story of, of, of Joshua, how they marched around Jericho seven times, and what did they do? They worshiped, and they, they screamed, and they worshiped God, and the walls came down, right? They didn't have to go in their own strength and go and knock down walls. No, they just worshiped God, and the walls came down, right? If you remember Gideon, how God only used him and only 300 men. And, and God told him, hey, when we say, you know, shout and worship. And when they, they did that, the enemy was defeated. So sometimes we're going through things in life and we're trying our, everything in our strength and our own power and it's not working. Because God wants us to, to use the weapons that he's given us. And I believe worship is a weapon that we need to utilize more often. Like, so we come to church and we lift our hands and yes, we're created to worship, but also remember that worship is a weapon. Amen. So can we just lift our hands? Can we just worship God right now? Whatever you're going through right now, just, just give it to God. You, you've tried it all. You've tried on your own strength. You've tried on your own emotions, physically, everything you can do to try to overcome. But God is saying, hey, just give it to me and just worship. Come on, can we sing that one more time? And let's just all just sing this in worship.
God. We just thank you, God. We just thank you, God, for your blood that you shed. We thank you, God, that you give us the strength. You give us the ability, God, to overcome. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, your precious Holy Spirit, the gift of your Holy Spirit that is here today. We thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody shouts, amen. Come on, let's give God some worship this morning. in a series, Crazy Faith. It takes faith, amen? It takes faith for everything. I mean, it takes faith for you to go to, your, to work. Get up, go to work. And how many of you believe that after you work the whole week, what, do, what happens? You get paid. You know, what if you, if you thought, no, I'm not going to go to work because I'm not going to get paid. You know, but you have faith enough to go with your sweat and work so hard, you know, because you're going to get a paycheck at the end of the week, a couple of weeks, whatever it would be. So that's, it takes faith. Amen? It takes faith. It takes faith to be here this morning. Amen? You know, I'm going to go to God's house and I'm going to feel better. Praise God. I'm going to feel encouraged, refreshed, renewed. Amen? So anyways, let me recap here. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we, had a, we heard a, a tremendous message uh, by my son, Pastor Mondo, here uh, on surrender. The alabaster jar, I know it by the alabaster box. Uh, the woman that came and surrendered, it was worth a, a whole year's salary. Can you imagine? I mean, she just came and gave it all to the Lord and, and just surrender it to God. And that's what God really wants. But guess what? It's not just a one-time surrender. I got saved 40 years ago. But guess what? You know, I still got to surrender every day. Every single day I have to surrender. Amen? So the, the first uh, point was, you know, surrender as you surrender the jar, uh, surrender your tears. How many of you know that God bottles your tears? When you are hurting, when you're going through something, and, and you're surre surrendering to God, and you're crying unto the Lord, there's angels of God bottling those tears. God knows, you know, what you are facing, what you're going through. And then sur she surrendered her hair. And her hair repre represented her identity, uh, who you are, you know, in Christ. Actually, you know, I mean, I know we identify ourselves by our job or our car or house. But, it, you know, actually we need to identify ourselves more, you know, through what God says about you. And he says that you are wonderfully made. Amen. God thinks that you are wonderful. So that, that's a blessing coming from God. So last week, actually, uh, I shared also, you know, and I began again about renewing, getting renewed. We got to get renewed every day, every day, every day. You know, it's something that we need to connect with God every day, every day. So I told you about that, about the inner man, you know. And that's why many times we go through things, but you have to have an inner man strong. Amen? Strong. That's why the Apostle Paul spoke to Timothy, in Second Timothy. You know, Timothy, stir up the gift. Timothy was a a pastor, or maybe, a, or even just a preacher, maybe. But anyways, 
he was just about to backslide. You know, he was not making it. And he reminded him, remember your grandmother. Remember your mother. That's why as parents... Our kids are watching us. If they get strength from anywhere, it's from us. It's from you. You know, that's where they get strength. Amen? And we think that our kids need us only when they're little. No, no. They, for the rest of their lives, they're growing and they're still facing things. They're going through things. And you have to be there. You have to be there. I'll never forget when my daughter Vanessa... What she went through a couple of years ago, Vanessa, that, that was, and I remember just being there, and I felt, oh, my God, helpless. I said, oh, my God, how can I help her? How can I help her? You know, and that really just did something to me, you know, and praise God that, they, that she came out victory, God brought her through, praise God. And that's what you want, you know, you, uh, people around you to grow in the Lord. To grow in God. And I, I, I use the scripture in Matthew 4.4. 4, Jesus answered, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You know, we, we get into physical, we get into soulish, you know, and it's okay. You know, God gave us that to enjoy it. But that's not what's supposed to lead you, you know. I mean, we like physical things, you know, it's all right. But we, we got to communicate with God in our spirit. That's why we got to stir up the gift. You know, it's not just physical. You know, so it's not by bread alone, not by the physical, not just by your, your job. You know, it, it brings the satisfaction. Your house brings the satisfaction. It feels good. It feels good to go eat physical. But if you are not in the spiritual, you know, you, you're going to be lacking, you know. So that's what, you know. Uh, we talked about, and then I talked about, you know, God has not given you the spirit of fear. There is so much fear everywhere, but it, it feels good. I, I, I'll be honest with you. You know, when this virus came about and all that, you know, I said, oh, I've been through so much. I've been through, you know, every devil and, you know, around me. But all of a sudden, one time, he just caught me by surprise. And, man, I, I was fearful, and, I, you know, I had to really... Stir up the gift and begin to pray, begin to pray, you know. And now, I mean, you know, you just feel that, you know, the strength of God. You feel God's strength. But you got to connect to God. You got to connect to God. Stir up the gift. So that's what, you know, what we're talking about. Uh, in Hebrews 1, you know, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. It's something that you cannot see. Can you see love? You can't see it. You can see it in a person when, you know, they're acting in love. Or can you see hate? Or, you know, so there's certain things that you cannot see, but you know they're there. So that, that's why, you know, it's how, what faith is all about, you know. And then uh, Hebrews 11.6, the one that Vanessa used. It is impossible to please God without faith. It is impossible. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God does exist and that he will reward you. You know, he will reward those who sincerely seek him. You have to understand there's a reward when you seek God and when you obey God. In, in through those things. And I, I use the example of Noah. God spoke to him, you know, go build a boat, a big ship. And, you know, can you imagine those times it didn't rain? You know, hey, God doesn't even rain. You know, you know a boat for what? It's going to flood. What do you mean it's going to flood? And that's what you're doing. What are you doing in church? You're building a boat for your family. You are building the kingdom of God around your family you know, and that's what God is doing with us. Amen? That's what God. And so, uh, so today I will continue. Uh, uh, and actually, uh, it was about being fruitful. Actually, the whole thing was, you know, uh, last week. Uh, but today, it's crazy faith that produces, you know, this is last week's notes. <laughs> uh, 
but uh, today will be crazy faith that will lead you to earnestness. In other words, to, to, a, to diligence. That's actually that's what it's saying. You know, uh, God is speaking to us. The word earnestness means sincere and intense conviction. How many of you know that God wants you to have an intense conviction in your life? Also means the word seriousness. Seriousness. You know, God wants you to have a good time and relax and all that. But there's a time that he also wants you to be serious about God's kingdom. Amen. Also, uh, having a zeal, you know, an encouragement. And the, the bottom line is giving the whole heart to God. Giving your whole heart to God. You know, the, the God has a problem with us. Uh, I know that. Many of us, I know that my wife has to remind me many times, you know, not lately, but many times get busy doing things. When I was building the church and I'm so busy and, you know, she has to, hey, hey, slow down, slow down. You're going here, you're going there, you're doing this, you're doing that. And, you know, and, you know, and it has to be, has to be reminded the same thing with God. God has to shake uh, they said, hey, hold on. <laughs> you're going too fast this way. or going, You're going too fast that way. And I want to speak to you. I want to talk to you. How many of you know that God is always speaking? God is always talking. But, you know, uh, sometimes we just don't listen. We're so fast. We're so busy. We're doing so many things, you know. And that's why we got to stop and try to hear God. Amen? You know, because we live in a world that how many of you know that we are addicted? People are so addicted. I mean, God had to deliver me so from so many addictions. And it doesn't have to be drugs. It can be just being busy with something. You know, you can get addicted to things. And they become idols. They become idols. You can say, well, I, I don't worship no idols. Yeah. Well, you know, how, how much time? Any time that your time... And your love that belongs to God, you're giving it to something else. It becomes an idol. And we don't realize that. You know? I mean, your car, your lawn. People right now, they're watering their grass because they want it to just look so nice. And they forget about God's house. They forget about the Lord. They forget. And, you know, and it becomes an idol in life. And it's so easy. So this morning, I want to talk to you about being diligent you know, about seeking the Lord. Number one, giving your whole heart in love. Your whole heart in love. You know, uh, many things sometimes, you know, they're things out of priority. You know, I've talked to so many people, you know, in all these years, uh, we used to have a mar marriage classes. And as you would talk to people, and they were having problems, you know, it wasn't bad things. It was a good thing that was out of priority. You know, sometimes people don't have to be out doing something bad. Sometimes you're doing something good, but that good is out of priority. You know, let me give you an example. A job. There's nothing wrong with a job. But sometimes you can get so busy that you forget about everything else. You forget about your wife. You forget about your family. You forget about, about God. There's, you know, we need to work. We need to make a living. I'm not saying, you know, don't work. No. But, you know, make sure that things are in right priority. You know, and sometimes we know there's problems. And all it is is something out of priority. Out of priority. So, number one, giving your whole heart in love. So that's why we got to put God in the right priority. Deut Deuteronomy 6, 5. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart. He knows where your heart is. You know, there was the Pharisee speaking to Jesus. You know, he says, you know what? You're speaking to me out of your mouth, not out of your heart. He knew. And that's what actually Mona was telling me. Hey, you're so busy. You know, 
you know, you talk to me out of your mouth, not out of your heart. I want your heart. And that's what happens many times. You know, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart. And so today, that's what I want you to do. I want you to, Lord, help me examine my heart. You know, love him with all your heart. <clears throat> Excuse me. Am I loving him with all my heart? <clears throat> oh, my soul. You know, because your soul is the one that actually, you know, we have problems with. The Bible says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing your mind, by renewing your soul. The soul, you know, because we do so many things with our soul. In other words, like, I lived for 27 years before I got saved. I lived in my soul. I was led by my soul. I had nightclubs, and then, man, and I thought that was it. Man, I, I, I got it all, you know, together. I was in the soulish, and then I get saved, and the soul didn't want to give up. And that's what we have trouble with all the time, every day. You know, God gave it to you, but he said, don't be led by your soul. Be led by your spirit. And that's what we got to do all the time. It, God is not saying, don't enjoy it. No, no, God gave it to us to enjoy. You know, or emotions, or feelings, or intellect. God gave us that, but he said, don't let lead you. That's what happened to Esau and Jacob. Remember when, when Esau actually was the firstborn, he was supposed to be so blessed, you know, but he allowed his soulish. He got in a place one day that he was so hungry, he was about to die. And that's what happens to a lot of people, I'm going to die. And so they give up the spiritual because they didn't take care of the spiritual. They didn't allow the spiritual to be first. They allowed the soulish. And what happened to him, you know, he gave up everything that God had for him to be blessed. You know, because he was in the soulish. You know, he was so hungry. He said, what good is this food? You know, I mean, what good is all this going to be if I'm going to die? I'll just give it all up and I'll just have a bowl of soup, you know, and that's all I want. And that's all he got. He gave everything away. So, you know, that's what God is saying. You know, connect with me. Connect with me so I can bless you. So I can bless you in your job. I can bless your family. I can bless around you. And that's what God Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul. Enjoy your soul, but don't be led by your soul in all your strength. <clears throat> you know, I know that we use our strength to do a lot of things. But when it comes to for God, oh, we have no strength. You know, so God knows that. Hey, come on, use your strength toward me also. You know, not just for your soul, not just for the world. You know, come toward me. So God is concerned. I want all of you. That's what he's saying. I want all of you. I want all of you. And actually, in Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven, actually, Jesus came with the same scripture when they came to him, Jesus, what is the first commandment, Jesus? What is it? You know, and he came with that same scripture, you know, and that, that is called the great commandment. Jesus replied, replied, love the Lord your God, the same thing with all your heart, with all your mind, all your soul, all your soul and all your mind, you know, you know. So we have to surrender everything, you know, find, you know, Every, something is there something that is keeping us and that's why we have to check ourselves all the time you know god you know doesn't want you to not get involved with nothing you know with everything no he doesn't want us to get involved in everything because through the physical here that's how you reach other people here in this world you know you know you you rub shoulders with the world you know so in your job in your you know around you your neighbors God wants you to be able to witness to them and tell them about the Lord. Amen. So Jesus said there, you know, Jesus said, this is the first commandment. And then actually, you know, uh, he also told us, love your neighbor 
as yourself. What is that? You know, uh, that is a ministry. You know, uh, we want to start some classes. You know, again, I know with all things, that everything that is happening, we haven't been able to do a lot of things. But we want to be able to do that. So the first thing, loving God with all your heart. What is that? Worship. Worship. What are we doing when you come to the house of God? You worship the Lord. Worship God. Worship God. You know, corporately. But God also want, wants us to worship Him individually. You know, that's why you got to be able to get a relationship with the Lord. And so you worship the Lord, you know, then you have love your neighbor. What is that? Ministry, you know, you know, and then what are we trying to do? Get the disciple, you know, in the church, you know, and that's when we evangelize also. We go and evangelize, you know, and that's what God wants us to do. You know, when, that's why when you go to your job, wherever you're at, it's not just about the job. Yes, God wants you to be blessed with the job, but it's not just about a job. That is temporal. You know, use it for your advantage, to your advantage, you know, to witness for the kingdom of God. You know, and then the Bible tells us, you know, get baptized, we fellowship, and we want to start also to, you know, be fellowship in our homes again one more time. And the Bible says also uh, teaching us, which is discipling us. That's what, you know, because we want to grow. We want to, you know, be able to do that. So I remember, and, and, and many times people don't understand worship. I know I didn't understand it. The very first time I went to a church, I thought people were crazy, you know, because people are not used to that. They're in their soulish. You know, they're in themselves. You know, they idol themselves. I know I used to idol me. Oh, I look what I have, look what I've done in the world. Well, but it, it didn't mean nothing. I was going to be so lost for eternity. You know, but you think that, you know, you know you, you've arrived, and, you know, but you have not. So you want to be able to do that. Because, you know, when we come to the house of God in Psalms 34.3, we are to celebrate his presence. Amen. And that's what we're doing when we worship God. We worship the Lord. Uh, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. You know, magnify the Lord. And that's what we're doing when we come to the house of God. And if you don't celebrate, you know, your relationship, you know, and his presence Actually, we are ignoring the reason God made us. God made us. You think God made you, you know, for what? You know, to worship him, to praise him. You know, I mean, you have children. When you, you feel good, you know, when they're around you, when they compliment you and, and they listen to you, you know, and all that, you know. I mean, that's the way we are. Well, what do you think about God? He just made you just to, for you to just get lost in the world? No. For you to worship Him. Amen? And that's what we want to do. We want to be able to worship the Lord. So, you know, worship God when we come to the house of God. But do not forget to do it daily. Amen? Start with 10 minutes. It doesn't matter. You know? Every day, just say, hey, this is your time, God. This is your time. I'm going to spend time with you. You know, I'm going to spend time in the Word, you know, so that you can allow to be able to hear the Spirit of God. Amen? Number two, giving your whole heart in obedience. In obedience. In uh, Psalms 119.2, joyful are those who obey His laws. Joyful are those who obey his laws. That's why what Mother Vanessa was talking about, you know, you know, obey God, obey. If, if God says to forgive, forgive. If God says give, we'll give, you know. I mean, God, God doesn't need our money. Did you know that? God doesn't need, you know, but he, 
you allow him. The Bible says that he will rebuke the devourer. Hey, there's a devil out there that he is busy. He's ready to steal, kill, and destroy. He's ready to come and take from you. You know, uh, someone said, if the, if, the, if the enemy can take your faith, then he takes everything from you. And that's why without faith, it's impossible to please God. So he takes that faith that he don't want you to do certain things. He says, good, don't do it. Because then it gives me a right to go in and take from you and steal from you. And if possible, kill you. And that's what God, you know, when you, we obey his, his laws, joyful are those who obey his laws. You know, I want the joy of God. Well, you can have the joy of God. You know, it's one of the, the, the fruits of the Spirit. You know, God's joy. But the Bible says with joy, you know, you can draw out of the wells of salvation. Joy is like a bucket. You know, you have God's joy and you start, you know, getting from the Lord. You know, the joy of God. You know, and says search for him with all your heart or all their heart. See, you know, God wants you to search with him with all his heart. Amen. In Genesis 22, 2, Abraham, I mean, someone that was, was challenged, you know, and obedient to God, your whole heart to God. You know, God spoke to Abraham in 22.2, take your son, your only son. That was his only son. It would have been okay. Yeah, you got 20 kids. Take one and you just, you know, sacrifice him. <laughs> no, it was his only son. You know, he probably would have said, yeah, God, I'm, I, I want to get rid of a few anyways. How about two or three, you know? <laughs> but take your only son. Yes, Isaac. What, Isaac God? Yes, Isaac. That's the one I want. Whom you love. See, God will come and see what you're in love with. What means so much to you? Has it become an idol? You know, has it become more or before me? Is that what it is? You know, whom you love so much. Does God want you to love your family? Yes, he does. But he, he wants you to love him more. I remember I, I told Mona when I came to God, I mean, we used to just kind of be upset at each other for days, sometimes weeks, when we came, first came to God. Not anymore, thank God. You know, and I remember I told her, you know what? I figured, I, right away I figured it out. You need to love God more than me. You need to love God. Why? Because the love comes from him. If she would connect to God and love God, she was going to love me. Amen? So I figured it out real quick. Hey, don't, you know, look at God and love him so you can love me. And so he said, so, uh, you love so much and go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering. Oh, my God. On, on one of the mountains which I will show you. What is there that you need to get rid of? It could be even fear. You don't have to be something good. It can be something attacking you. you, be, you it has become an idol against you. You know, God wants to make sure. But what happened with Abraham? The next morning, he got up early. He didn't waste any time. God didn't, have, you know, some people you have to convince and talk and say and twist their arm and, and do everything impossible and, you know, you know, pull their ears. And I remember my grandmother used to pull our ears, you know, we didn't want to listen. And, and uh, but he got up in the morning, he settled his donkey and took two of his servants with him. And as they were traveling, the Bible says, they were traveling up there. Finally, he said, he told the servants, hey, guys, stay here. 
Me and my son are going up into the mountain and will be back. Hey, that's faith. Man, you know, that's faith. Both of us are coming back. He knew I serve a God that loves me. I, I serve a God that is fair. I serve a God that died for me. So he trusted in God. And why do you trust God? Because he gave his life for you. And sometimes you don't want to give your, your, your love to him or you don't want to give, you know, and surrender to him. When he gave everything for you. And we don't understand that. And that's why we have problems sometimes. We have trouble. But anyways, they were taking wood and they were taking fire. And finally, Isaac stopped and said, Father. And he said, yes, son. You know, we have the fire, I mean, the wood and, and, and to make fire. We have the knife, you know. But where is the sheep? You know, for the burnt offering. He didn't know that he, it was him. He didn't know that. Abraham was ready to surrender his son, ready to surrender his son. And people, you think, oh, it was easy for him. No, I mean, I, he was battling. Some of you, you know, somebody stares badly at your kid, and man, you want to fight him real quick. Man, hey, don't look at my kid like that, or don't get after him like that. I mean, just a little something, you get so upset. Can you imagine going up and sacrifice him? I mean, man, was he battling? You better believe he was battling. You better believe he was battling. But because of his faith, it encouraged him. It was no fear there. He was no, no doubt there. He was just saying, yes, God, here it is. And as he took him up there, he, put him, he, he laid him actually, you know, by the wood. And all of a sudden, he got a knife, and he was going to stab his son. And an angel of the Lord spoke to Abraham and called, Abraham, Abraham. And he heard, he said, yes, Lord. He says, do not hurt your son. Now I know that you fear God. And that's all that God wants to know. Do you fear him? Before you do something that is not right, you know, do you, do you have breaks to stop, you know, you know, and he stopped before something that is an idol, you know, God, I want to surrender it to you. I want to give it to you. And that's all he wants. You know, God has given us his Holy Spirit so that we can judge ourselves as a Christian, as a believer. You know, God has given you the Spirit of God. But if you don't spend time with God's Spirit, how can He convict you and tell you, you need to change this, you need to do this, or you need to do that. You know, you need to be able to surrender to God. Amen? That's what God wants for our lives. God wants to make sure that there is no idols there. There is nothing that is before him. Amen. He don't mind you having things. He don't mind you enjoying life. He don't mind any of those things. But God is a jealous God. And he wants to be first. Amen. He wants to be number one. You know, I've heard a lot of people, I, I'm number one. No, God wants to be number one in our lives. Amen. And that's what he wants to do in our, in our lives. So let's give him praise this morning. Let's give God praise this morning. Yes, he deserves all the praise. He deserves all the praise. Number three, give your whole heart in truth. In truth. The Bible says that the truth will set you free. And that's why when you're in God's house and when you pray, or when you read the word of God, you, you want to hear truth. Why? So you can be free. You know, a lot of people can't be free because sometimes they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear, you know, and, and that's why, you know. But the Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. You know, God wants you to trust him. Have you ever, you know, not trust somebody? Right. You know, when you don't trust somebody, 
your whole heart is not involved. Oh, no, no, I don't trust that person. That, you know, that person can do this or do that or whatever, you know. But God, you know, if you have those feelings about God, then you don't trust him. Well, I don't know if, if I should forgive that person or if I don't know if I should give. Well, you know, that means that you don't trust God. You don't trust the Lord. You know, after so many years, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not depend on your own understanding. And that's what happens with a lot of people. They want to understand it. They want to figure out. I remember when I, I first went to church. And I said, I'm going to understand it. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to put a finger on it. And I'm out of here. I'm getting out of church. Because this is not what I need. You know, that's what I thought. I was leaning on my own understanding. I, and I was looking at the people and I said, you know what? I wonder if they drink like some of my liquor. I, I, I had the clubs back then. Uh, you know, they're not all there. I go to church, but uh, I wonder if they've done some of my drugs. Uh, let me see. And, you know, or number three, I wonder if they're crazy. You know, maybe they're crazy. Something wrong with them. I don't need this. I'm, I'm trying to figure God out. And guess what? You're not going to figure him out. You, so you might as, might as well surrender to God. Amen? You know, and make it easy for yourself and make it easy. Actually, it's not for God, really. You know, God has all the time in the world. The Bible says that a, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day to God. God says, okay. You say, well, you're going to wait three days? Okay. Well, that's like waiting 3,000 years. Okay, that's fine. Fine with me. I'll wait. And God is there, and we're wondering, because we're in the physical, we're in the soulish, and we, we just, I mean, we go with time, with time. So truth, Proverbs 12, 19, truthful words stand truthful words stand and that's what God wants you to do to stand stand everything that you do be able to stand the test of time stand the uh, stand the test of time but lies are soon exposed lies are soon exposed you can lie all you want to to God, but eventually, you know, he's going to expose it. He's going to tell you exactly. So might as well, you know, the Bible tells us to put on the full armor of God, you know, the belt of truth, you know. And sometimes, you know, it, we, we say, well, I got the full armor of God, you know, or oh, really, are you walking in truth? You got no belt on. Your pants are going to fall. You know, and you think you got it all together? No. That's why we have to walk in the truth of God. You're not lying to anybody but yourself. Amen. So God is truth. You know, the test of time. What is happening today? People, it's tested. The test of time. But lies are soon exposed. Anything that's a lie is going to come to the open. The devil is a liar. He's going to come and be exposed eventually. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Number four. Give your whole heart in prayer. Jeremiah 29, 13. If you look for me wholeheartedly. Wholeheartedly. You will find me. You will find me. Sometimes we, you know, we don't hear from God and, oh, my God, I, I don't hear. No. Just seek him and you will find him. How? Wholeheartedly. Wholeheartedly. You will find me. You know, he's saying wholeheartedly and you will find me. Amen. Amen. Number 14, I will be found by you, says the Lord. 
God is not hiding himself. When Adam and Eve, they were hiding from God. You know, they were hiding behind a tree. Where? I don't know. But God knew. And sometimes we hide because we want to hide things that we shouldn't have done. Things that we shouldn't have said. You know, things that we did. And we hide from God. But God is wanting to expose the truth so that you can be free. Amen? So that you can be free, says the Lord. I will end your captivity. Hey, he don't want you to be captive. God wants you to be free. God wants you to be free. And restore your fortunes. I will gather you out and will bring you home again. What does that mean? When we're not home, it means we run away. And we can run away from God. I remember I made a decision. I'll give you this example. I made a decision to quit a job that I never should have quit. And when I did, I went through so much. I was sitting right there in church. But I felt that I was so far away. You could be sitting right there where you're at. And you're still far away until you open your heart to God. And surrender to God with your whole heart. Amen. We can go, you know, through all the movements. And, you know, it's, it's like somebody that is blind, you know. And they can't see. But after a while, they, they, can, they know the steps. They can go. And, and we can do the same thing. We, we can come like Pharisees. And I'm in church. Everything is fine. No, I mean, yes, it's good. It's going to help you. It's going to strengthen you. But until you open your heart, until you surrender yourself to the truth of God, because God wants to set you free. Amen. God wants to restore you. That's what God wants to do. God wants to strengthen you. And that's what God wants to do. Let me give you the last one. Number five, give your whole heart of repentance. That's the whole thing about in, in Joel 2.12. A call to repentance. That is why the Lord says, turn to me now. Now. Everybody say now. 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 While there is time. While there is time. God knows people that, guess what? Time. Have you ever run out of time? Man, I want to do this. And you run out of time. I'll never forget my friend Raul when I first came to God. Raul was a man like 6'3", huge, that he thought that not, nobody could touch him because he was so big. Big old hands, you know, huge man, and, but very inexperienced to the world, very inexperienced to the world. And he got in a fight with some men. He, he used to come to my house every morning and, you know, Ring the doorbell and, you know, here I am. And, you know, I had a pool table, play some pool and talked and planned the day and all that. But one day I came to the Lord and he came over and I said, Raul, I've changed. I've changed. I'm not the same person anymore. What happened? I gave my heart to the Lord. I gave my heart to God. He says, man, how about everything that we're doing? Man, you got the clubs and you got, you know, you, you know you're going to make a million dollars. I said, yeah, you know what? God showed me when I got saved. You know what? You're going to make nothing. You're going to end up dying if you don't change your ways. You know, and my God, I gave my heart to the Lord. Thank God. God, you know, it didn't take long. God had just showed me everything was on the line. You know, nightclubs, everything. And man, when God showed me, when God opens your eyes and shows you what's in front of you, there's a cliff. You're not going to wow, go jump into the cliff and say, man, I want to back out from the cliff. And my God, I mean, I, it had been years since I had shed a tear. I was so prideful, so arrogant, so, and all of a sudden, man, I was like a little baby just crying to God. God was just touching my heart. And that's what God wants to do right now with your heart. Amen. Can you lift up your hands this, this morning? 
Lift up your hands to the Lord. And he says, a call, turn now while there is time. And I'll never forget Raul. It didn't take but a week. I said, Raul, I mean, I'm, I'm out of here. He says, you know what? I can't. He knew that if I would be moved, he would take my place and he was going to make those million dollars. He was going to make money. But to me, I had, God had already spoken to me and showed me what was ahead of me. And he got deceived. He says, you know what? I want to make more money. I, I, you know, I want to meet Mr. Spade. I want to meet that preacher. I want to, me and my wife just got back together. We were separated. And, you know, I want to do all these things. But I just want to make more money. There's nothing wrong with money. But the love of money is the root of all, all evil. When, you, when, when that becomes an idol, that was my idol back then. That was his idol. And I'll never forget the phone call that I received. His wife by the name of Martha on the other side of the phone was just screaming. Raul is dead. Raul is dead. The Raul. And she was just crying. He says, he's, he's been shot. And I said, oh, my God. God, hopefully before he died and closed his eyes, God, he called upon you. And we don't know. We don't know. But the Bible says, as, as a tree falleth and it lieth, so it be. It, it, that's it. As long as we're breathing, we have a chance to change our hearts. Let's stand together. We have a chance to change our hearts. In Luke 15, 21, the prodigal son. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against you. The prodigal son he came one day and said, Father, give me what belongs to me. I want it now. And he took off and got lost until he came to the bottom. He came to nothing. And sometimes that's what God allows. Why? Does he want us there? No. But he, he would rather have us repent and be right. Because if anything will happen to you or me, we got to be in, in, a, in a place of repentance ready if the Lord is coming back tonight. But if, if, what if he's coming back 50 years? Well, stay busy. There's nothing wrong with it. But get witnessing. But he said, Father, he realized, he recognized. And that's what we have to do when we come to that place. Father, I have sinned against both Heaven and you. Sometimes we sin against our wives or, or husbands or family members. But you know what? We don't realize that we sin against God himself too. You know, we think we, we're just sinning against physically. But no, we're, we're sinning against God spiritually. I have sinned against you, God. And you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But what did the father do? Did the father cast him out and say, get out of here? No, he didn't do that. He said, but his father said to the servant, quick, bring the finest robe. Bring the ring. Bring the best food. We're going to celebrate because my son was lost, but now he is found. Let's give God a hand of applause this morning. Thank you, Jesus. God is reaching out to you. If you've been away from God, he loves you. He cares for you. It happens to anybody. It happens to me before. I've made a lot of mistakes. Everybody, nobody's perfect. That's why he allows us to repent to him. Today, maybe you don't know Jesus. It's time 
to come to the Lord. It's time to come to Jesus. Because you don't know how much time, more time you have. You don't know how much more time. And God is warning you. It's time to surrender to me. We know and you know that I don't know when Jesus is coming back. But we are in the end times. I don't know. It could be a year, five years, ten years. We don't know. But it's going to be close. And the thing is, are we ready to surrender to God? So let's surrender with our whole heart in repentance. Can we lift up our hands this morning? Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you. Father, we thank you, God, for your presence, for the anointing, God. God, that you would just touch us and renew us, God, and refresh us. And God, let us be able to stir up the gift that is within us, God. To be able to go forward in Jesus' mighty name, God. We thank you and we give you praise and honor and glory, Jesus. Thank you today, God. Father, in Jesus' name, let's, let's, let's just have this prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we surrender. I realize I need you. Forgive me of any sin right now. Holy Spirit, help me to seek you, to get close to you. In Jesus' mighty name, give me a desire, God, a desire for the word of God, for the things of God. Father, to be the, uh, the best father, the best mother, a child, God. Father, to be able, God. Father, to serve you with my whole heart. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let's give God a hand of applause this morning. <laughs>